get ready to see how I use Dollar Tree products to make some of these boho DIYs for home decor. You'll love that rustic bohemian feel of them and you'll also love the price tag. And as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hey guys, it's Anika and welcome to my channel, Crafty Repeat. So today I have some boho DIYs for you that are made from items from Dollar Tree, super affordable, but I'm just really loving the boho vibe lately. So these can fit into like a modern farmhouse decor or even a more global boho sort of a feel. Whatever you want your vibe to be, these can fit right in and I just love kind of that rustic quality that they have. So I really hope you enjoy them. Now two of these came out exactly as I intended and one of them was like kind of an experiment and was like sort of a fail and also sort of brilliant. <laughs> so be sure to watch and see how that one turned out and let me know what you think of it down in the comments after you've seen all the DIYs. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Everyone hit that notification bell so you'll be ready when my next video comes out. And when it's over, in addition to telling me what you think of my little experiment, also let me know which DIY was your favorite. Or of course, you can always just say hi. Also, don't forget to find me on my social media platforms and let me see what you're working on. I'd love to be inspired. Okay, guys. It's time to craft. So the first DIY is going to be a boho style pendant lamp made from only a few items. You'll love the way it looks. I'm gonna start out with some Mod Podge. Now I have this giant economy sized one that I will link down below in the comments if you need a lot of Mod Podge, but you can also find a smaller amount at the Dollar Tree that would be perfect for this DIY. I'm also going to dilute some cornstarch into some water and I'm gonna use that mixture to thin out the Mod Podge just a little bit. Now I have done this type of a project a few times and I find this mixture to be the best at giving me a nice firm hold without giving me too much um, Mod Podge to have to pick out from the tiny holes in between all the twine that we're going to be using. Now I didn't measure this out as you can see I just looked to see if it was thick or thin enough and I only used about two tablespoons of the cornstarch and then just as much water as needed to make it a nice mixture. Next, I laid out a towel because guys, this is going to get messy. <laughs> I got some twine. This is the end of a roll that I got from Dollar Tree. I also ended up using maybe half of another roll. So I think if you get one full roll at Dollar Tree, that should be plenty for this project. Now I've blown up a balloon and I just sized this about to the size that I needed for the lamp base that I'm going to use but you could really use any lamp and you can just decide how big you want your balloon to be because this is gonna be the size that our pendant lamp shade is going to end up. Now soaking my twine in my mixture, getting it nice and messy and saturated, I'm just going to put it in and then as I go, I'm kind of running it in between my fingers to pull off any excess glue mixture so that it doesn't get too messy and too wasteful of this mixture. So as you can see, I'm just kind of stripping it here and the amount that's on there is perfect and it's going to harden and it won't stay this white color. It's gonna be clear when we are done. So don't be afraid to use as much as you need to get it nice and saturated. Now I'm just gonna wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap until it looks kind of good to you. Now I liked mine kind of with a fuller look like this, but you could do less twine than this and have more open holes in it. Whatever you want yours to look like, you can do that. Now when I'm done, I'm just gonna snip it off. I'm gonna tuck the edge under and I'm just gonna put a little extra glue mixture to make sure that that loose end stays nice and firm and glued together when I'm done. Then I'm gonna grab a cup and I'm just gonna set my balloon right on top and I let this dry overnight. I did need to turn it one or two times just to make sure that the part that was inside the cup also had a chance to dry. And once it's done, it should be nice and hard like this. 
So once it's hardened, it is time to pop the balloon. I just use some scissors and snip a small hole into the balloon and it, as it deflates, it will pull away from the twine and you may just need to poke it here or there to make sure it detaches completely. Now for this project, I am using a lamp that I got from Ikea. I love this lamp. I have a few of them around my house and they're so easy to customize to whatever you need and they only cost a few dollars. So that's a win-win for me. I'm just deciding which side I want to be the top and which side I want to be the bottom of my lamp. And at the top, I decided that would be kind of the wider part of the balloon. All I needed was a few snips just to make sure that I could fit that head of the lamp through a small hole. Now what I love about that Ikea lamp is that that whole light bulb detaches and it's really easy just to kind of screw on different lampshades whenever I feel like changing my mood. And then for the bottom part, I'm just cutting a small opening I decided to cut a circle and mine was only a few inches in diameter but I thought that gave it a great look now because there's lots of holes in this lampshade the light comes through really beautifully so I really didn't need too much of an opening at the bottom once I had it all cut I was able to remove the balloon from the inside of my lampshade and it was time to attach it to my lamp And that's it. With a little glue and some twine, I made this beautiful boho style lamp. I love the way this looks. I love how easy it was and I'm feeling inspired to try to make a bigger one next time. For the next DIY, I'm going to need these giant bamboo skewers that I got from the food section at the Dollar Tree. Now, I wanna go ahead and stain these because I want them to be a little bit of a richer color. You could leave them the color that they are depending on what color scheme you want for your decor. That would look really nice too. Next, I'm going to use this four by six frame that I got from Dollar Tree. Now I was just looking around for a frame. At first I thought I would do a white frame, but I saw this one that was black with kind of this gold edging and I thought that would be really nice for a boho look. So I decided to grab this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all of the padding out as well as the glass inside of the frame. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use that glass to just give me an idea of how long I need each one of my bamboo skewers to be cut. And I just kinda eyeballed it and cut it to length. Now I was able to get about three of these sticks out of each bamboo skewer. And I had maybe three or four of the skewers left over at the end. So I'd say one package is the perfect amount. And this is a DIY that you can do with the smaller bamboo skewers as well. You'll just need to measure them out and see how many you're going to need. Once I had them all cut to size, I put the glass back into the frame and now I'm just gonna lay all the pieces out on top of the glass. Now, some of these had a little bit of a curve to it, so I did have to just eyeball it and see what was the best way to fit them all in there. Now I'm going to return one piece of the matting just to make sure everything stays secure and I'm going to return the backing onto the frame. After this was done, I noticed that I had a few leftover bamboo skewers so I wanted to make a handle for each side. I thought that would look really nice on the tray. Now I got these wood beads from Walmart around Christmas time. You guys, I'm always on the lookout for wood beads and $6 for a pack of already painted or stained wood beads was a great deal. So I went ahead and purchased them. So I'm just gonna take two of these beads and one of my extra skewers that I did not use and I'm just going to glue them together to make a little bit of a handle. Now to add another little bit of boho charm to this, I'm gonna take a little bit of twine and create an X by just looping around the skewer and the bead to make a little crisscross pattern. I think this added a little bit of that natural feel to it and I loved that little detail. 
I went ahead and sanded down both sides of the handles and that was it. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of glue to kind of attach the backing onto the frame because I noticed that the skewers were pushing through a little bit and I wanted this to be stable so that I could put candles or whatever I wanted on it so I wanted to make sure it was nice and secure. I also decided to go ahead and take the picture stand off the back and all the hardware because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this at first, but once I decided that it was going to be a tray, I knew I did not need them. Next, I'm going to add a few more beads to the bottom just to act as little feet for my tray. And once those are all on there, I'm ready to go ahead and turn it over and add my handles. I love the global boho look of this piece. I love the gold detailing, the bamboo, the natural fibers. I love that it looks high end and that it was made from Dollar Tree products. Now this next DIY is sort of an experiment, so we'll see how it comes out. I'm going to start out with all of these Dollar Tree plastic containers. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to need, so I just grabbed a bunch of different ones and decided to go with it. Now I need to glue the smaller ones inside the larger ones because this is going to create an opening in the bowls and containers that we're going to make. Now, you guys, I have to tell you, I came across this idea one night when I was just kind of going down the YouTube rabbit hole when I probably should have been sleeping. And I saw this crafting video. It was not in English. The instructions were not written in English. I have no idea what this person wanted me to do, but they were a crafty soul indeed. And I was just really inspired by the video. So I decided to try it. I'll be sure to link it down in the description box below so you can check it out. So once I have just a few different types of containers with some other smaller containers inside, I'm going to go ahead and grab this plunger stick that I also got from Dollar Tree because one of the pieces from the inspiration video had some feet on it. And I was like, hey, I think I can use a plunger for that. Let's see how that turns out. <laughs> So I'm just going to cut this plunger down into, I cut them down into about five inch pieces. Of course, depending on the size of container you're using, you may want to adjust that. After they were cut, I just went ahead and sanded them down until they were nice and smooth. Now, once that was done, I was ready for the more experimental portion of this DIY. Now, I just grabbed the closest kitchen towel that I could find because I realized this was going to get messy and then I immediately regretted it because, well, for one thing, I ruined my favorite kitchen towel and also it makes it kind of busy on the camera. So I'm sorry if it's hard to see what I'm doing here. I'm going to grab some of this non-slip matting and I'm going to cut it down to the size of one of my bowls that I've already prepared with the smaller bowl glued inside. And I'm just going to kind of line that up around the edge of the bowl and that's going to create a cool little pattern in the final project once everything is completed. So once that's in there and I know it's the right size, I need to grab some of this cooking spray and I'm just going to spray the outer edge of the bowl and I'm also going to spray both sides of the um, pattern whatever you're using to form your pattern so that it won't stick to the final project. Now this is really important and I learned at the end that you cannot skimp on the spray. I feel like too much is not possible so make sure you make it nice and greasy. So the inspiration video used white cement, which I think would be really pretty on this, but I didn't have any and I decided to just use this bag that I had in my garage and it's just the regular gray color. So I'm going to go ahead and take the cement and mix it. Now the bag didn't give me any explicit instructions on how much water to put in. All it said was to make sure it's not too soupy. Now me not being a cement and pavement expert, I wasn't sure what standard to go by to make sure it wasn't too soupy. But what I can tell you is that for this particular DIY, I think if it had been watered down a little bit more, I think I would have gotten a nice smooth edge on the outside. So about the consistency that you see here is what you're going to want it to be. You want it to have a little bit of give to it so 
so that you can get the bubbles out easily and so that you have some nice smooth edges. Now I'm just gonna pour my cement mixture into my container that I have prepared and I'm just kind of gonna wiggle it and um, bump it and get all the bubbles out and hopefully make it nice and smooth. Now I'm just gonna take my little dowels that I cut and I'm going to stick them into the cement so that they can dry in there. Now, hindsight being 2020, I probably should have used a level to make sure that these looked good, but you know, you live and you learn. So I'm gonna do the same process with some lace. I thought that would be a really cool thing to try and see how it turned out. So I'm gonna take my spray and spray it down and then I'm gonna take my lace and make sure it is also nice and non-stick and I'm gonna stick it back inside. I also wanted to make kind of like, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a candle holder or a little plant stand, but I decided to just make it and then decide what it was gonna be. <laughs> so I used these small party bowls from the Dollar Tree for that and I made sure those were nice and greasy as well. Now I went to Lowe's and I found some pigment because since I didn't have any of the white cement, I wonder if I could just kind of dye it to be a nice pretty color and I'm kind of obsessed with terracotta right now. So I got this terracotta pigment pigment from Lowe's. It was about six dollars I believe and the instructions said to dilute it in water so I went ahead and diluted it and then I used that as part of the water that I used in the cement to make the mixture. Now for this process, I just kept adding pigment and water until it was a consistency and color that I liked. In hindsight, once again, hindsight being 2020, I think I would have made the mixture a little bit thinner than I did so that the bubbles and the little folds and crevices wouldn't be in there. Um, and it just depends on what you like. You can get a more rustic, feel out of it if it's a little thicker if you want it to be a little more smooth and modern and sleek looking then you can go with a thinner mixture and just allow more time to dry once it's the consistency and color that i like i'm just going to go ahead and put it into my containers Now I've got to tell you, it was fun playing around with this, thinking of different ideas and seeing what I could come up with. Now I would recommend giving this a full 48 hours to dry. You guys, you cannot rush this. I found that out the hard way. But once it's dried, if you've sprayed it enough, it should all slip right out of your plastic containers. And then I just removed the lace from this one and I love the way this looks. The pattern is not perfect, but it looks like something that could have gotten dug up somewhere. Now this one, my sweet little toddler found and decided to play with the sticks and then stick them back in in all kinds of wonky ways. <laughs> so that was not awesome. It didn't look awesome. And then when I pulled the sides off, I realized that I hadn't sprayed this little non-slip thing enough and I didn't put it in there straight. And I'm gonna call this one a DIY fail. It kind of looks like a dog bowl to me that maybe someone made in like fifth grade pottery class. <laughs> But the idea is there. I think it could be great. I think I'm going to try again for a stand with some legs and just make some little adjustments to this guy. <laughs> now just in case you're wondering what happens if you don't give it a full 48 hours to dry <laughs> this is what happens i tried this one after 24 hours and 
yeah, just don't do it. <laughs> Now for the smaller ones, a lot of these slipped really easily out. I think I, by that time I had realized that I needed to put a lot of spray. And I really actually love the shape of this one. Now one bowl I just filled up completely, so it's just a solid half circle. In this one I glued a medicine cup to the inside of it and I just filled it up to the top of that so it's kind of got a little opening in the top. Now I kind of like the shape of this and I like how it kind of looks a bit archaeological. I love the way the color came out and I love that I could put something down in it so I'm gonna call that one a win and now this guy I thought I had sprayed and I didn't so this is this is your warning like put a ton of spray i worked on this thing for 30 minutes and i'm just gonna tell you that i didn't get it out i just quit <laughs> so yeah that that's another fail so all together i had two that i absolutely loved the look of and two that i would call complete and utter failures now I will say that this is a bit sandy and dusty and especially this pigment, it kept coming off onto my fingers. So in order to make sure that I didn't completely stain up all of my house, I just grabbed some of this Mod Podge acrylic spray and I sprayed the outside of it so that it would seal everything in and that worked brilliantly. I only needed to use about three or four coats of spray and it looked great. Overall, I love the way this experiment came out. I love kind of the rustic look of these pieces. And I love that I have an entire giant bag of like $5 semen and I can experiment and make totally new creations. I'm definitely going to be doing more of this in the future. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. Okay, so sometimes this happens where I legitimately cannot choose a favorite DIY. I love all three of these for different reasons. I love twine and that kind of pendant lamp thing is right up my alley and I love how affordable it was. That tray looks so cool and it has that global vibe that I love. And then my experiment, even though it was messy, even though it didn't turn out the way I wanted, I love the two pieces that I ended up with. They will be displayed prominently in my entryway so that everyone can see them. So don't forget to head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. So today's treat, sometimes I do like a full on recipe, but I would call this one more of a hack. It is so simple, which is part of the beauty of it. But once you have this little tidbit of information, you will never want to go back to regular brownies again. So it's time to eat. If you have midnight chocolate cravings or you need to make something for a party or a potluck, this is the recipe for you if you want quick and delicious. I'm just gonna start out with this box brownie mix and I'm just gonna follow the directions on the back of the box and make the brownies exactly as instructed. Once my mix is prepared, I'm going to get a pan and I'm actually going to use a smaller pan than I normally would. You can use an 8x8 or maybe even smaller, but you want it to be deep rather than nice thin brownies. I'm going to put half of my mix into the bottom of the tray and then this is where the magic happens. I'm going to grab some Twix. You can also do Snickers for this recipe, but my personal favorite is Twix because then you get that crunch from the cookies and it is just it's just delicious so i'm just going to hide these twix right down into that little bed of chocolate batter that we've prepared and then i'm going to take the other half of the batter and pour it right over the twix making sure to cover them now i like to make sure there's at least a little bit of space in between the twix that they're not actually touching each other this allows for brownies to kind of bake around them and you just get this chocolatey goodness. You get the cookie, you get the melted caramel if you eat it while it's warm. And then right around where all of the cookies are, where that chocolate is melted, you get this intense chocolatey deliciousness that is just, it's just great. So now you're just gonna bake this 
per the instructions on the back of the box. And when it comes out, make sure that you let it cool just for a little while before you cut it. And when you do cut it, make sure you get a little bit of that chocolatey, cookie, caramelly goodness in every bite. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the DIYs I had for you today. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to leave me a comment down below. And I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.